Hey everybody, Homicide Center here, and in today's video, we're taking a look at some incredibly fun battles in the Master Premier Cup featuring a fully maxed out level 50 Darmanitan. These battles were submitted to the channel by a member of the community, Halcyon Wild, so many thanks for the battle submission. Now, Darmanitan is the epitome of a glass cannon. This thing can output monster damage thanks to its great moveset of Incinerate, Rockside, and Overheat, but it cannot take a hit whatsoever. So without further ado, let's hop into the matches and let's see what Darmanitan can do in the Master Premier Cup. Hopping into the first match, leading Darmanitan into Metagross, a terrific lead. Opponent safe switches into Togekiss and oh my goodness, they are completely core broken by the Darmanitan. In comes Magnezone. Magnezone is going to look to commit a shield. It is only an ancient power, but just wanting to preserve HP. And this Magnezone is not running Mirror Shot. It's running Wild Charge and Flash Cannon. Gonna undercharge a Wild Charge. The opponent commits a shield, but that's not gonna help them. They get fully farmed down. Magnezone leaves with two Wild Charges. And this Metagross now has the shield, or it's getting KO'd by the back-to-back -back moves. They do expend the final shield, but now they're gonna have to deal with a Darmanitan up a shield, which is a very scary thought. Opponent is gonna get the full farm down, but now in comes Darmanitan, and look at the incinerates go. Darmanitan commits the shield, Metagross baits with the Meteor Mash. They're not getting to another move. Whatever they had in bag did not want to see Darmanitan, and the opponent concedes the match. And we're right back where we started in the next match. I swear, I know this is not the same battle because the Darmanitan is staying in, but someone must have made a Metagross Togekiss video, and that is just a complete disrespect to any fire type, and now Darmanitan has its time to shine. Darmanitan grabs a shield with a rock slide, in comes the Magnezone. Magnezone again just looking to preserve HP, getting a massive farm down, getting to exit with the double wild charge and just apply so much pressure to this Metagross. The wild charge will connect, and we see a very nice overfarm by the Magnezone. Magnezone firing off another wild charge. This wild charge will pick up the knockout. In the back is a Gyarados. There's just no hope for the opponent, and they will concede the match. We move to the next match. Okay, lost lead. Darmanitan versus Gudra. In comes the Magnezone. Opponent sends out a Mamoswine. Oh no. Oh no. Mamoswine can take a mirror shot, but they cannot take the flash cannon one hit KO. And that's three battles in two minutes. This team is win fast or lose fast. Darmanitan right back where it wants to be, leading into Metagross once again in the next match. The Gudra save switch immediately punished with Florges, and the opponent is already not off to a terrific start in this match. Gudra, thankfully not building up to a potential Sludge Wave. I did get Sludge Wave the other day, and it was not a particularly fun time for me. We're going to see a Disarming Voice thrown. As the Florges, you can actually go for a Moonblast and a Fairy Wind farm down, but Disarming Voice still works as well, just a little energy inefficient. Going for Disarming Voice number two. Opponent doesn't really have a reason to shield here, so they are going to let that through. In comes the Metagross. Metagross going to get a pretty decent farm. Florges going to retaliate with the Moonblast. The Moonblast will connect. Metagross gets some energy, but now in comes Darmanitan, and these incinerates do so much damage. The shield from Darmanitan, will it be the Earthquake? No, it's the Meteor Mash bait. They're staying in. Darmanitan not going to let Metagross make it to a move. Fires off the Rock Slide. Rock Slide picks up the KO in the back. It's Togekiss. Okay. Someone has to have made a video at this point. Someone has to have made a video saying that Metagross Togekiss is a terrific core because this team just keeps seeing that core and keeps just absolutely bullying it. Oh my goodness. Darmanitan gets to another Rock Slide. Opponent won't even get to see the third. Darmanitan taking care of the Togekiss and securing the win. Tough lead in the next match, Darmanitan versus Gudra. Immediate save switch to the Magnezone, and the Gudra is staying in this matchup. We're going to see a switch by the opponent into another Mammal Swine. Oh no. Oh no, it's just gone. It's gone. It's over. Oh no, the Mammal Swine in absolute shambles. Unlike the last opponent who just completely no-shielded, this opponent will actually stay in after they get one hit KO'd and try and fight back. It appears that they're running Thunder Punch Draco Meteor as they Thunder Punch the Electric Steel type. We're going to see a Flash Cannon get shielded. Opponent should be able to fully farm down here, and they will. 
but now they're gonna have to deal with Florges. Florges more than happy to absorb Thunder Punches. Opponent went for a blind Draco Meteor into the Florges, and there is the top left. We move to the next match. Darmanitan versus Mamoswine. Mamoswine is staying in. They will switch out into Ursaluna, but this is not an amazing spot to be for the opponent. They're going to be met with an overheat. They will commit the shield, and now in comes Florges. Florges doesn't really have to respect charge moves here because one move is not going to KO. It is only going to end up being the Ice Punch. Florges farming up quite a bit of energy. Already at a shield advantage here, going to fire off the Moonblast, and the Moonblast will comfortably put it into a range where Disarming Voice will be enough to knock out. The nice thing here is you don't necessarily need switch advantage. We are going to see the shield used because switch advantage, I mean, just having the incinerate damage on the Mammoth Swine is nice. But as long as you're able to get the final shield down, you don't necessarily need switch advantage per se. Opponent just throws their move right away here, which is a misplay. They should over farm more. So then they can potentially make it to a move versus the Mammoth Swine. Whereas now it ends up in a situation where the Mammoth Swine has no energy and an end game where it's Dragonite versus Magnezone. Magnezone going for the Flash Cannon, shielded by the opponent. And I think at this point, you might just be able to save the shield for Darmanitan. We are going to see the no shield. It is the superpower. That's going to be goodbye to the Magnezone. And Darmanitan, no shielding as Dragonite goes for the Dragon Claw. We're going to see Darmanitan over farming. It's getting very low. The question will be, can it survive the resisted Powder Snows? The Rock Slide picks up the KO. In comes Mamoswine and Darmanitan. Fractions of HP remaining, but it does not care, making it to the overheat and securing the victory. We move to the next match, picking up a bit of a tricky lead here. Darmanitan versus Sui and Avalog. The Sui and Avalog, if it can land a Rock Slide, is going to be a massive problem. This Rock Slide probably just one hit KOs the Glassy Darmanitan. We will see the shield on the Rock Slide. And now, Darmanitan says, anything you can do, I can do better. Returning fire with a Rock Slide of its own and grabbing a shield from the opponent. Darmanitan going to get outpaced here, which is quite unfortunate. Committing the shield. Again, not a bait. That is very helpful. But Darmanitan, we're going to see a switch and a catch. Catching the move onto the Magnezone and saving two rock slides for later. Magnezone met with the Dragonite. If you throw one more Volt Switch there, so if you throw four instead of three, the Dragonite can just outpace and knock you out. So throwing the Wild Charge right away is going to be the correct play. Opponent will overfarm, and they're just going to fire off their energy as they go for the superpower just to guarantee the knockout. But now in comes Florges. Darmanitan has so much stored energy for later in the match. And that's really awkward because Darmanitan can output a tremendous amount of damage. Like, that's what this thing does. It takes no hits, but it also takes no prisoners in terms of the amount of damage it can do. In comes the Avalog. Avalog will be met with the Disarming Voice. Disarming Voice, I don't think will quite knock out. Florges just cannot get the farm down. Avalog barely able to hang on and make it to the Icy Wind. What is that final Pokemon? It's a Gyarados. And there's two Rock Slides on Darmanitan. Rock Slide number one will get them low. And now the Overheat BM. Oh my goodness. Darmanitan knocking out the Gyarados. And able to secure that win. Moving to the next match. Terrible lead Darmanitan versus Dragonite. The safe switch to the Magnezone. Opponent staying in with the Dragonite. They throw right as they make the superpower. So they're probably going for it. We are going to see the shield. It is the superpower. Magnezone continues to farm. Opponent makes what has to have been a misclick as they send his Sui and Avalog into a Magnezone. That is basically the worst thing you could send into a Magnezone. Flash Cannon one hit KOs and the opponent is now in a very difficult position. That just has to be a misclick because even if it's a regular Magnezone with Mirror Shot and Wild Charge, it's still a nightmare matchup. Avalog can never win that. Opponent goes for the Dragon Claw, but even with the debuff defense, it's still not enough to knock out. The Wild Charge is going to pick up the KO, and now we see why they had to do what they did, because they have a Togekiss in the back. Just zero respect whatsoever for Magnezone. Oh my goodness. Going to fire off the Rock Slide, grab the shield from the opponent. They're going to go for the Ancient Power, but Darmanitan wants to finish this fight. Darmanitan shielding up the Ancient Power. Thankfully, there is not going to be a boost. And unfortunately, no bad manners overheat as the opponent concedes the match right before the move gets clicked.
Great lead in the next match. Darmanitan going up against a Gardevoir. Opponent saves switches to Ursaluna. Just going to stay in with Darmanitan and fire off the Overheat. The Overheat is able to land, dealing massive, massive damage to that Ursaluna. Ursaluna, one of the bulkiest Pokemon in the format, so that damage neutrally is pretty absurd. Florges looking for the farm down, but the Ursaluna refuses to get knocked out. Ursaluna makes the high horsepower and forces the shield. Opponent is going to send back in the Gardevoir. Gardevoir going to have to deal with a lot of stored charge attacks here. And it is the Shadow Gardevoir as well, which means it is even glassier than the regular. Another Disarming Voice is going to grab the shield. We're going to see Florges barely able to make it to yet another Disarming Voice, applying so much pressure to the opponent. And they're just going to get fully KO'd. And it's Gyarados in the back. Top left in three... Two. Oh, I didn't even get to see one. Opponent is out of here. Tough lead in the next match. Darmanitan versus Gudra. We're going to see an Incinerate Throne and then the switch to Magnezone. If the opponent has something like a ground type in the back, the Magnezone save switch is just going to auto lose. So it is definitely a strategy that is very feast or famine because if your opponent is going to have something like that in the back, it's just game over on the spot. Here, the opponent makes an interesting play. They go for a Meteor Mash right away. Meteor Mash is double resisted. They definitely would have been a lot better off had they waited for the Wild Charge to be thrown, and then they could have gone for the Meteor Mash, and the Meteor Mash would have actually knocked out. Whereas now, they waste their energy in a way that's very inefficient. Magnezone is able to pick up the knockout and leave with a Wild Charge loaded as well. So the opponent... A mismanagement of that mid-game now puts them in a very difficult spot because Gudra is now stuck against Florges. In the back, it's a Waterfall Gyarados. Oh no, Darmanitan getting absolutely shredded as these Waterfalls delete it from the game. The Rock Slide is shielded, but now it's all up to Florges to try and sweep. Florges commits the shield. Gyarados will go for the Aqua Tail. This Gyarados has so much energy. This is going to be a problem. Gyarados... Going to be able to land that Aqua Tail. These waterfalls add up as well. Florges returning fire with the charge attack. It's the Moonblast. Moonblast does get shielded up. And this Gyarados is going to be able to make it to another Aqua Tail. I mean, you have to shield here as the Florges. You have no other option. The opponent switches into Gudra, and Gudra is immediately going to be met with the Moonblast. Moonblast to the Gudra is going to pick up the KO. In comes the Gyarados. Florges makes it to the Moonblast. Is this going to be enough to KO? It's going to be very close. The Moonblast does not KO, but the Fairy Wind after does, and somehow that game will end in victory. Lost lead in the next match, Darmanitan versus Gyarados. It's a Waterfall Gyarados. We actually see a save switch into Florges this time. Florges, another Pokemon that's a bit risky to save switch, because if they have something like a Steel type in the back, you're going to be in for a very difficult battle. But in this case, looks like we did see a prediction that it was going to be Waterfall Gyarados Double Charm, and it does end up being that team. And in that case, then Magnezone should just be able to completely sweep in the endgame. Florges is able to land the Moonblast. In comes Darmanitan. Darmanitan looking for the farm down and just does not get it. The Ancient Power is reached, so we will see the shield by the Darmanitan. Opponent can send back in the Gyarados, but Gyarados is going to take a lot of damage from the Rock Slide. Very nice charge attack timing here. We are going to see the Rock Slide fire. That does quite a lot of damage. In comes the Magnezone. There it is right on cue, the second Charmer, and the opponent will resign the match. Hopping into the final match, leading Darmanitan into Shadow Magnezone. One final Steel type for Darmanitan to devour. Opponent is going to save switch into Annihilate, and Annihilate is going to be met with the Florges. If the opponent is safe switching Annihilate and they're leading with a Steel type, it's a pretty safe bet that they're trying to lure out a Florges, so they should have something as their third Pokemon, which is going to be weak to the Florges as well. There, the opponent actually ended up baiting the Florges. Florges no shielded because the Shadow Ball is not threatening whatsoever. Opponent this time is going to full send the Shadow Ball, and Florges will immediately return fire. Florges is going to go for the Disarming Voice. Disarming Voice not going to be enough to KO. Going to fire off a third Disarming Voice. Opponent has already shielded once, and they will not shield twice. They send in the Magnezone. Magnezone gets the farm down. In comes Darmanitan. It's Gyarados in the back, and the opponent just completely lost on alignment, is going to resign the match. 
So the opponent's team was a Florges bait out, but the back Pokemon just wasn't a Pokemon that takes super effective damage from Florges. So Dragon Breath Gyarados has a very poor matchup against Florges. So the, the team definitely makes sense concept wise, but unfortunately there is a second much harder counter to the Gyarados in the back. So there just wasn't really anything the opponent could do basically entirely off of alignment. All in all, I think Darmanitan is a very cool pick, and these are definitely some of the more entertaining battles that I've seen in the Master Premier Cup. Darmanitan definitely feels like a feast or famine type Pokemon. If you can get it up energy or against one of the many steel or fairy types in the meta, it can feel just absolutely powerful to use. But if you're stuck against one of those dragon types, like if you're going up against something like a Gudra or even a Dragonite, it's not gonna be a particularly fun time. So overall, I think it's a fun pick. Could you win with it if you support it well with strong meta Pokemon? Yes, but overall, I think it definitely falls more in the fun camp than a Pokemon that I'd recommend for climbing. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And a special thank you as always to our members here on YouTube. The support guys provide is sincerely appreciated. So thank you guys oh so very much. And until next time, I've been Home Slice Henry.